we thank God that we could wake up. Others could not get the chance, but God is still gracious to us. Hallelujah. Yes. Shall we rise this morning and open the prayer? Thank you, Father God. We thank you for keeping us, God. You are God. You are God eternal. There is no one like you, Lord. There is no other God we have known but you, Lord. Thank you that we could come to your house this morning, Lord. In your presence, Lord, there is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You say those who seek you shall find you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that we will find you. Thank you that those who seek you diligently, they will find you. Yes, Father God, this is your house where your word will be read, Lord. Lord, you exalt your word above your name, Lord. What you say you will do, Lord, you really do it. You are a faithful God. We have not seen any other God. We are the only God we can run to when everything around us is shaking, when everything is unstable, Lord. You remain stable. You are faithful. You are our Savior. You are the Savior of the world. Thank you, Lord, that we can run unto you. The Russians run unto you, Lord, and they are saved. Thank you, Father God. We come against any spirit in this house that opposes what will be done in this place, Lord. We take it captive. We bring it captive. It is under our feet, Lord. Lord, have authority. Have your union in this place. Holy Spirit, we invite you that you partake.
sense when you just quiet. You just, you know, you shut, shut off from everything around you. Just close your eyes. You just, you know, you just take a cell out. And you just say, thank you, Jesus. And as you say, thank you, Jesus, just picture what Christ has done for you at the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when you, when you can do that, you do that often. And you begin to see what power the cross has made available to you. I promise you. You see how things will change around you. Just take a selah, take a moment, just breathe out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. You know, I'm just reminded of someone that's running and is out of breath. Normally, when someone is out of breath, they've been running, you find there's someone who will encourage that person to say, take a moment, take a breather, take a deep breath. Let us stand so in life, in the busyness of life, you've got to just take a moment to just take a breather. Hallelujah. Just close your eyes and just say, thank you, Jesus. All this is Jesus. See, because when, as you do that continually, you are acknowledging that he is Lord of the circumstance. The circumstance will not move you. Because you're acknowledging his lordship. As you do that, you see how those stormy seas all of a sudden become calm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Pastor. I don't think I have a good morning, everybody. God is it's good to be in the presence of the Lord Amen. this morning. Amen. Amen. We thank God for yet another opportunity where we can hear this precious word. Amen. Just, you know, wave to your neighbor and just say, God bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's so good to see everybody this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, praise God. Well, I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This morning, um, I'd like to call up Tracy as she's going to minister the word of the offering this morning. Amen. And I want to encourage you. Tap in. Tap in. Tap in. Hallelujah. You know, in the days we're living in now, I'm telling you, we are seeing a manifestation of how sowing and reaping is speaking in the lives of people. Oh, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You be faithful to God and be a faithful steward. You see how God, God is always faithful, even if you are faithful. God is still faithful. It doesn't matter. But the thing is, there's so much more God is made available to us, but we've got a partner. We've got a partner with God. We've got a, in other words, you walk in agreement with God. God has got you covered. God has got you sorted out. Come and talk to me. You know, there are people where, um, you know, we, we've been receiving testimonies of people who were in line for retrenchments. Retrenchments were, you know, were on the table. And just through their partnership with God, how God opened doors. In the times you are living in, there are people that are being promoted, people that are being employed. You are seeing how you know, one person shared with us that, you know, um, in the home, in their home, everybody was found to be positive. It was COVID. But this person was in contact with all of them, and yet, nothing, 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 nothing. They were tested negative. 
Even long after everybody in the whole household had been covered, this person was still naked. And you know, I you know when I when I heard that testimony, I was moved. And I, you know, I began to I began to question. I said, how is this? And then, uh, you know, I happened to look and I saw how faithful this person is. Come on, come on, I'm telling you. Yes. You know, um, oh Jesus, I don't want to listen to God. I've got someone that's going to listen to you. But I want to encourage you. You know how people um, every year they look at their medical uh, their medical aid. So you can liken that the time. Liken it to a medical aid. Liken it to an insurance cover. I've seen many times how God has come to, come to, come to. Come on, it's your insurance. It's your Come on, medical. You don't need to be sick. See, this is a curse. Poverty is a curse. Lack is a curse. Come on, talk to me. It's a curse. But you are, God has blessed you to be a blessing. And this morning, Sister Tracy, as she comes up, she's going to minister the word of God to us out of here. I want to encourage you to receive. Good morning, church. My offering message today is the only investment that lasts forever. I will read from Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 21. says, um, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Having a healthy retirement plan and college savings for the children is one thing. But we must be wary of investing our resources and our attention in things that won't last. This passage is calling us to use what we have to invest in God's kingdom. Where moth and rust cannot destroy anything, and where thieves can, can't break in and steal. The scripture is showing us that when we look to God and commit ourselves to Him, our finances will also be committed to heavenly things. Both our heart and our money must be in the same place. Money isn't just a thing we use here on earth. How we use our resources is an open display of whose we are. In Luke chapter 16 verse 10, it reads, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. Everything we have doesn't just come from God, it belongs to Him. As stewards, we are called to be God's financial advisors and investors. He entrusts us with His money and we choose how it will be used and invested. The true test of our ability to be good stewards doesn't happen when we have plenty. In fact, it's when we have little. How do we invest a little or plenty? We have to bless others and honor God to good stewardship. Are we open-handed and generous? Or are we stingy because we are afraid of being in lack for long periods of time? Steward, the little God has given you wealth and you'll be trusted with much. Be encouraged to approach generosity with an open heart 
as we commit God's resources back to Him with thanksgiving and continue investing wisely into the kingdom. As we prepare to give, I encourage you to reflect on Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 21, on what it means to commit your heart and your finances to the kingdom. Amen. Please get out your Bibles and pens and notebooks and get ready to share the word of God by Pastor Father. Thank you.
It's not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And he says, he goes on, he says, I also say to you that you are Peter. It may, watch here. I say to you that you are Peter. You understand? Yes, you may be flesh and blood. But there's something about you now. He says, I say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. In other words, he's saying, you are a new creation now. You are a new being. And based on this truth, that you are a new creation, I will build my church because you are my church. The church is not the building that we've assembled in. We, the saints, are the church. When we gather in this building, this building becomes a dwelling place. It becomes a sanctuary for His presence, for His sins. When two or more are gathered in my name, they are mine in the midst of them. Hallelujah. That which he calls you, he calls you by your new name. He doesn't call you by your old name. When God calls you, he doesn't call you based on your past. He calls you based on the glorious future and the glorious plan he already has set up for you. That's why he says, you, I say, come on, talk to me. This is nobody that is common that is saying this to you. It's Jesus says, I say to you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. Watch this. In other words, I will build you. And the gates of Hades, the gates of hell shall, shall not do what? Shall not do what? Shall not prevail against it. It means there's nothing that the enemy can bring your way that will destroy you or wash you out because you have a builder whose name is Jesus and he's book come and talk to me somebody. He says, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Hallelujah. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. And I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The keys, somebody say keys. Yes. Hallelujah. I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Take note. He says the keys of, not the keys to. If he said, I will give you the keys to the kingdom. Keys to means I'm outside. Keys of means I'm inside. You must remember that Jesus is the door into the kingdom. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. He is the only way to God. He is the only way to God. He is the only one who can reveal the truth of God to you. And He is the only one who can give you the life of God. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Come on, say amen somebody. Now you've entered the door. Now that you're inside, He says, I give you the keys of the kingdom. It means that in this kingdom, everything has been provided for. It's up to you to take the keys and start unlocking them doors. Well, you're not hearing me, somebody. Because he goes on to say, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. That's where you operate from. You are no longer the old. The same old, same old. You are in the kingdom of God. You've 
belong to the family of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. He says, I give you the keys of the kingdom. The keys of means I can bind on earth. It will be bound in heaven. I can loose on earth. It will be loosed in Keys are symbolic of authority. Symbolic of authority. Say authority. Yeah, symbolic of authority. The Greek word for authority. Remember when Jesus sent the 70. He says, behold, I give you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions. You remember that in Luke's gospel? I give you, come and talk to me. I give you authority. I give you authority to tread upon. It means to trample upon. Serpents and scorpions. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Father. Hallelujah. Do you know what that means, somebody? Hallelujah. It means that you have, the Greek word is exousia. Exousia means delegated authority. Let me give an example. Can I use you, Brother Johnny, as an example? If Brother Johnny, you know, Brother Johnny just comes to you and says, I want to I wanna marry you. Uh, you understand, he's got a couple in front of him. I want to marry you. If it's just Brother Johnny, it has no weight. Unless he has been empowered by the state. That's why when people get married, the person officiating the marriage ceremony will say, by the power vested in me. By the power vested in me, I pronounce, I declare, I say, You are married. You see that? That, that is exousia. If the state has not given him that authority, it is meaningless. But once the state confers that authority upon him and he exercises it, it means something. It carries weight. Imagine this that all of a sudden, this woman was a miss. And when, as long as, as soon as he pronounced those words or declared and said, by the power vested in me, I pronounce you husband and wife. From that moment on, she's no longer a miss, she's a missus. She becomes a missus. And when she becomes a missus, you see, we mustn't listen. We are married to Christ. He is our husband. We are his wife. We must never like it to natural. Because on a natural plane, Jesus, you find husbands and wives, you know, this is mine, this is yours, this is mine. No, it is ours. When you, when you join yourself to Christ, he doesn't say, listen, this is mine, this is mine. You understand? You've got a friend for yourself. No. He brings you into this thing. It's now ours. It's ours. The checkbook. There's it. It's ours. Come on. Talk to me. The, the thing is, he says, I give you authority. I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. Hallelujah. And over all the power of the enemy. That's what he says. I give you authority over all the power of the enemy. You know, this week I was, as I was speaking to the Lord, this is what the Lord said to me. Never base 
or equate my power, my, abil my ability, my authority, and my grace to your circumstances. Never equate the power, ability, authority, and grace of God to your circumstances. Because God is bigger than your circumstances. God is bigger than what you are facing. So you cannot look at your circumstances and say, oh, no, I can't do this thing. No, the power of God is greater. He says, my strength is made perfect when you are weakness. Don't focus on your weaknesses. Focus on Christ. He is your strength. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Focus on Christ. He is your strength. I will look unto the hills. From where cometh my help? From where cometh my strength? My strength, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Hallelujah. So don't look at your circumstances and think that you left to fend for yourself. No, God has not left you to fend for yourself. He has said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that amazing? That's what God says. I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. You know, you have, let's go quickly to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 2. Exodus chapter 5. Exodus chapter 5. You remember the account of Moses in the burning bush from Exodus 3, 4. You know how Moses began to make excuses of why. And very often, that is the problem with God's people. The thing is, how hungry are you? How determined are you? Are you just like that woman that would say, I'll press through the crowds? Are you like Jacob that would say, I will not leave you until you bless me? I will not leave you until every word that you have said comes to pass in my life. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Moses says, I'm, I'm, I'm a man of, I'm, I can't speak. I stutter. I'm not a man of eloquent speech. God is not concerned about what you can't do. <laughs> because he sees you doing it. You know, yesterday, we, we went out of town on our way driving back home. <clears throat> I was speaking to my sons. And I was speaking to Kurt. And, you know, I was trying to tell him. I said, listen, let me, let me tell you about my life. And I started giving him a rundown, giving him a pep talk. I was telling him, don't make the same mistakes I made. And I began sharing with him in terms of education. So how many opportunities came and I let them go? How many opportunities I had very often? I mean, I was still studying. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to tell you, listen, don't be like me now. When you marry, you've got a family, and then now you want to study. No, study first. I said to you, even now, my problem is not really family and busyness. My family. My problem is laziness. So very often, I'm lazy, I'm tired. And I make excuses. I'm tired. Or I'm busy. Or, you understand what I'm saying? And Joshua rebuked me. Oh, through the mouths of babes, perfected praise. And Joshua said to me, Dad, when you feel like that, you've got your books open. When you feel like that, close your eyes. Close your eyes. 
and see the person that God has called you to become. See that person that has already completed what you are doing and has it already and see how successful that person is and allow that person to speak to you. I had to stop for a moment. I said, wait a minute, just say that again. <laughs> you understand? And I said, wow. And it's God rebuking me through my son. Where there's no vision the people. So you've got to allow the vision to speak to you. So don't go by what you see now. But take a moment, cut off and see your future. Because listen, you've been to your past and that's the problem many people make. They go to their past too long or too many times and they waste everything on their past. How they failed, how they've been disappointed and how, you know, it's just one thing after another. Listen, you've been to your past already. Stop revisiting it. God has taken you out of it. He's taken you out to bring you in to something better. You've never been to your future. How many of you have been to your future? How many of you have been to your future? When last did you visit your future? You see that? Wow. You've, you've been to your past. And every time you go to your past, it, you just get disappointed. You just get discouraged. You just get full of doubt and despair. But when you visit your future, you get filled with hope. You get filled with encouragement. Come and talk to me. And you get filled with, with expectation. And once you have expectation, if you are expecting whatever you expect, it's going to manifest. Are you, are you with me? That woman of the issue of blood, she already saw herself being healed. For she said within herself, the Bible says, if I can only just touch. So she saw herself touching. She saw herself being She was healed long before she touched. You got that? She was healed long before she touched because she saw herself touching and she saw herself being healed. And she responded based on what she saw. It's the same with, with, I, with Abraham and Isaac. They were praying up to go worship. Isaac didn't know that that day his father was going to put him on an altar and would offer him unto God. Would give his life unto God. The promise that God had promised him. The only promise. The only son of promise. Abraham was prepared to lay it all down for God. Because Abraham saw, he saw that if God who promised me one son can give me one son and ask me to offer him up, how much more will he not give me a nation? That's why when I when they went up, Isaac said, My father, we go up to worship. But I see, I see the sticks. I see everything for the fire. But where is the offering? Where is the sacrifice? Abraham looked at Isaac and he said, My son, God himself will provide. God himself will provide. And it was at that moment. When Abraham spoke then, that is when God already provided. He provided based on what he said. He spoke the word of faith. And then when he spoke the word of faith, he acted in faith. Faith without works is dead. But faith coupled with action activates power, activates Come on, the resources of heaven. And as Abraham was about to take his life, the Bible says, 
and a voice came. An angel appeared, God speaking to Abraham said, Now I know that you love me. Now I know that you love me. For you have not withheld your only son from me. And when Abraham turned in the thicket, was a lamb caught by his horns in the thicket. That means your miracle is so close to you. It's so close. The thing you are trusting God for, it's so close to you. Your future is so close to you. God says, in blessing I will bless you. In multiplying I will multiply. Talk to me somebody. Hallelujah. Praise God. In Exodus chapter 5, God now has spoken to Moses. And verse 1 says, Afterwards, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord God of Israel. Thus says who? The Lord God of Israel. Let my people go. I want you to underline that. Let my people go. In other words, these people, they, don't, they belong to me. You see, it's like many times you find people when it comes to receiving Christ, receiving the gift of salvation, you find people find every excuse why they can't be saved. Oh no, you don't know what I've done. Oh no, you don't know my story. Oh no, you don't know how to speak about I am. Oh no, you don't know the depth that I, that I have. Come on, talk to me somebody. Every excuse, but let me tell you, don't equate that to the power of God that can save you. Because once you receive salvation, once you receive Jesus, every remembrance of, your, of that is gone, it's washed away. He no longer sees you based on your past. He no longer sees you based on your mistakes. He sees you through the eyes of the blood, through the blood. He sees his child. And God speaks to Moses and he sends Moses and says, Moses, you go to Pharaoh. Now this morning, I believe God is telling you, what is the Pharaoh in your life? What is the Pharaoh in your life? What is keeping you bound? What is keeping you bound? So much so that you cannot fulfill your destiny. So much so that you cannot, you cannot go or move towards your God-given assignment. He says, speak to that Pharaoh. Speak to Pharaoh and say, loose my people and let them go. Loose my people and let them go. We find in John's Gospel, chapter number 11 and verse 44, when Lazarus comes out of the tomb, when Lazarus comes out of the tomb, the Bible says he still had grave cuts. From his head to his feet, he had grave cuts. And there are many people that are like that. They've come out of the tomb, they've come out of the tomb, but they are bound. When he had come out, we find that Jesus speaks and he says, Loose him and let him go. Yes. Loose him of the grave clouds. God telling you this morning, Loose yourself from what's keeping you bound. Yes, you've come out of the tomb, but by virtue of coming out of the tomb, it's not enough because you've got to go into the womb. The womb is where there's life. The womb is where you receive your punishment. The womb is where you receive everything you need. Yeah. It's not enough just to step out of the tomb and you're still bound because then you're not free. He says, loose him and let him go. Yeah. Loose him and let him go. In other words, once you, once you're loose, you're free. Now I can dream again. Now I can hope again. Now I can believe God again. Now I can trust God again. More than I have before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Look in the Gospel of Luke chapter 13. 
You find there a woman who had a spirit of infirmity for 18 long years. 18 years. One eight. She had an 18 year problem. And she comes to Jesus. She comes to Jesus and Jesus says, Daughter, thou art loosed. Thou art loosed. Take note. Take note. Moses goes to Pharaoh. And what does he say to Pharaoh? Thus says the Lord. Moses says, Thus says the Lord. Ezekiel, in the valley of bones, when he speaks, he says what? Thus says the Lord. We find all throughout the Old Testament. All the prophets say, Thus says the Lord. And now we find Jesus, the Son of God. When Jesus speaks, he says, Verily, verily, I say. I will let you. I'm going to pray for you. All the prophets of old, thus says the Lord. Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, but the Son of God. Truly, truly, I say to you. I say to you. You with me? You getting that? Watch what God says to Moses in Exodus 7 and verse 1. So the Lord said to Moses, See, see, it's important what you see before you. It's important what you see before you. God says to Moses, See, I have made you. Come on, read that for me. You read it for me. One, two, go. Come and read that one more time. Come and read it one more time. Psalm 82, verse number 6. Psalm 82, verse 6. Bahoshka, Brakia, Tere, Bahoshka. Tere, Brakia, Doromo, Brakia, Sakata. Psalm 82, verse 6. You there? Can you read that for me? One more time. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Amen. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 5.20 tells us we are ambassadors of Christ. Listen, the Bible you, you're not just an ordinary being. You are a son, a daughter of the Most High God. You are a child of the Most High God. You represent God. Amen. Come and talk to me. When someone has an encounter with you, they have a God encounter. Oh, Jesus, talk to me, somebody. 
When someone has an encounter with you, they have an encounter with God. They have a God encounter because God dwells in you. You are a son of God. Your sonship is not based on optical observation. Your sonship, the Bible says the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are sons of God. And if sons, then heirs of God. And join heirs together with Christ. You are a son of God. You represent God. Ambassadors of Christ. You represent Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here's my question. Did David run from Goliath? Answer me. Did David run from Goliath? Hey? David didn't run from Goliath. But after he slew Goliath, all the Philistines ran. And the fame of David, the fame of David spread throughout the land. Here's the thing. What is going to make you famous? What is going to make you famous? What is going to make you the talk of the town? What is going to make you the talk of your generation? What is going to make you the talk of the century? Your Goliath. Unless you slay him, you remain where you are. I think it was Christopher Columbus who said this. He says, unless If you stay on the shore, you'll never get to the other side. If you stay where you are, you'll never get to the other side. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. So you've got to slay your Goliath. And once you overcome your Goliath, you find the word will spread. That's why even, you know, even the devil knows who he can play around with. You know, that, that Christian, I can, I can run a walk with. He knows that. Remember the seven sons of Sceva? They were exercising their spirit out. And they said, we cast you out in the name of this Jesus whom Paul preaches. And the demon answered and spoke. He said, Jesus I know. Paul I know. Who are you? Hallelujah. Amen. You must see yourself that way. When you open your eyes, the devil starts to run because, oh my goodness, that one's a week now. You got to give him a permanent headache. When he comes to trouble you, when he brings trouble your way, you trouble, trouble. Don't run away. Hallelujah. Come on, talk to me. You gotta stand. After having done all, the Bible says stand. Amen. Other words, listen, you gotta speak to your Goliath. You gotta speak to that Pharaoh. Look at Jesus. In Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, we find Jesus sees a big tree. He's hungry. He desires fruit. He comes to it. He sees there's nothing on the tree. And he rebukes him. He says, let no one eat of him anymore. How about you? Come and talk to me. You represent God. You represent Christ in the earth. That's why. It's so important. When you come to church, bring your notebook, bring your pen, make notes. Why? Because Habakkuk 2.2 2 says, write down the vision. For it is for an appointed time. That he who reads it may run. And it will speak. That's why you write down as you're in the service, as you're in the service, as you're hearing the word of God. God is speaking to you and you start writing down. Listen, listen, listen. The Bible says that we have been made, Christ has made us kings and priests unto God. You are a king and a priest. Come on, talk to me, somebody. First Peter 2 verse 9 tells you that you are a 
chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. The Bible says where the word of a king is, there is power. The devil wants you to shut up. He doesn't want you to speak. You see, let me tell you, while you're sitting there, Jesus, you remember the book of Esther? You remember the book of Esther? You remember the account of Esther? There was a law that was enforced. And the king could not just change it. How could he, how that law was changed? He enforced another law. But when that law, the, when that law was enforced, how did he do it? He wrote it down. Oh Jesus, someone getting it. He wrote it down and he stamped it with his signature and that, that message was taken throughout the land. That there's a new law now. In other words, when you start, you see, that's why you want to study the word of God. As you study, make notes. Make notes, because God is speaking. You, you're writing down what God is speaking. And when you're faced with things in life, you start looking at what you've written, and you start speaking what is written. And when you speak what is written, it is, listen, it's God speaking. Because who told you that which you wrote down? God. Therefore, when I speak, it's God speaking. That's why Jesus come unto me, all you who are weak and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Learn from me, for, for my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Learn from me. Learn from Jesus. When he saw that fig tree had no fruit, he spoke and he said, let no one ever eat from you again. How about you standing up today? You're standing up for yourself, for your spouse, for your children, for your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, and you look at that victory and you say, let no one ever eat from you again. Brothers and sisters in Christ, yes, they are generational curses, but they are also generational blessings. They are generational blessings. You step into a blessing that will affect not just you, but your children, your children's children, and your children's children's children. For all generations, they shall be blessed. When does a generation change? A generation changes when the genes change. When do the genes change? The genes change when I connect with the blood, that divine blood of the Son of God, who makes me a son. Now I have a new I have new genes in me. I have a new DNA. I'm not who I was. I'm not who I used to be. I am who I am, but by the grace of God. Hallelujah. You have been loosed. Amen. You've been loosed. You've been freed. Look at the book of Numbers. Numbers 22. We find Balak and Balak, you remember the story? The king of Moab, he sends for the man of God. He says, hey, listen, come. I see a nation that is greater than I, that has come out of Egypt. Listen, when you come out, the fame of you will spread. Did you hear? Did you hear? How? Did you hear Moshe is serving God now? Did you hear Jimmy is serving God? Did you hear Vusi is serving God? Did you hear Lyle is serving God? Did you hear? They will ask. And that's how it's, the word spreads. And then you find when that spreads, and people say, I don't believe I must see for myself. And when they come and they see, they have an encounter with God. Because they look at this person now. And they say, the nose I see now, the dolly I see now, the leafy I see now, it's not the one I saw before. This, this, this is not the same Tracy now. This is, a, this is a different one. Because they have an encounter with God. They have an encounter with the grace of God. Hallelujah. And then you find now the king of Moab, he got wind of it. He heard about this nation. He heard about this people. And he sends 
for the man of God to invoke a curse over them. And the man of God, God told him, don't go. Those people are blessed. <laughs> Those people are blessed. Uh, come and talk to me, somebody. I see people, I, I don't know who's trying to bark up your alley to bring a curse your way, but there's a voice that speaks that's greater that says, don't go there. They are blessed. 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 The man of God failed to hear. He got on his donkey. And his donkey spoke. The donkey. The donkey speaking. A donkey no longer making the sound it would always make. But look at him and speak. You find he gets there and his first prophecy, he speaks blessing. How can I curse what God has blessed? Come on, remember Peter in the book of Acts. How can you call unclean what God has declared to be clean? How dare you? How dare you? Listen, don't worry about who's trying to curse you. The blessing that you have will fight on your behalf. You didn't get that. The blessing will fight on your behalf. The blessing will work on your behalf. You are blessed to be a blessing, not to curse people. Hallelujah. That's why you represent Christ. When you speak to your circumstance, it is not you speaking, but it is Him speaking. Why do you speak? You speak the word. You only speak the word. You only speak the word. That's why Jesus was moved from the centurion. He said, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. Only say the word. 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 Well, what do you have to do? Only say the word. Jesus didn't go to the fig tree and start plucking it. He just spoke. He just spoke. Why do you want to start picking things in your life? Tire yourself and get frustrated. No! Speak the word. If you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say, and it shall be so. You with me? I mean, all these things motivational speakers tell you about writing down your goals and that's all. Listen, what they've done, they actually tell you what's already in the Bible, what you want that which you ought to know. It's all in the Bible. They've just taken what they like to take, what sounds nice to them, and they put it into books and you go buy these books, seven steps to this, ten steps to that. Hey, listen, you can open the word of God, and you can take one step of faith. One step. One step is all it takes. Not 10 steps, 15 steps, 20 steps. Man, the steps just start increasing. Steps, steps, steps. I'm climbing, but I'm getting nowhere. I'm climbing, but I'm getting tired. No. Step into the word. Step into the water. Step into the water. That man that lay there by that pool, by that pool, when Jesus asked him, do you want to be made well? There he goes, same like everybody. Excuse after excuse after excuse why it can't be done. Every time I want to go, someone else goes. Every time I want to live, no, 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 no. Moaning, groaning, whining, complaining. No. Somebody say, no, I've been freed, I've been loosed, I've been loosed, yes. The thing is, watch this thing, what are you losing in your life? What words are you speaking? Whatever your life is today, look at your life today. Take a good look at your life today. Now, this is the only time I'm telling you to visit your past. Okay? Look at your life today and go back. Go back a year, 
Go back two years, go back three years, four years, five years, and see what you were speaking five years ago. What you were speaking in your past is where you find yourself now. So what am I telling you? Change your language. Speak the promises. Speak the word. Speak the word. Speak the word. The word will produce for you. The word is seed. And seed has the ability to produce after its kind. So you speak and you see how the word will manifest for you. Come on. Speak your promotion into existence. Speak your business into existence. Come on, talk to me. Speak, come on, talk to me, somebody. Speak a good godly spouse into your existence. Speak a godly marriage into your... Come on. Many times you find people, they complain about their spouse and that. Yeah, why? Look at what you've been telling your spouse. Somebody. Look at what you've been saying. You complain about the children. What have you been saying about the children? Hey, you naughty. Hey, you da 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 da. Ah, you're fine. The child. Your words. Your words. What are you speaking? Your workplace. Hey, this place. Huh? Hey, you get that? You see, all these places that have been closing, they haven't been closing because of COVID. They've been closing. Because of the people's mouths. You shut the business down, not COVID. Don't blame COVID. Don't give the glory, the glory to the devil for something he didn't do. The devil can't create anything. It is God who creates. The devil is only a destroyer. He takes what God has created and he twists it. So don't believe his lies. No way in the Bible does it say Satan created anything. Satan cannot create. God is the creator. He's made you come and talk to me in his image and likeness. Are you hearing me? You are son, you are daughter of the most high God. That means you have created the ability. And what does the devil do? He plays around with your mind and gets you to speak the wrong thing. Get you to, he cannot curse you. He gets you to curse yourself. All these people, hey this place, hey this place, hey this place, and then when the doors are closing, ah, oh, pastor, please pray for me, oh, pastor, oh, pastor, oh, pastor, oh, pastor. But what were you speaking? What were you speaking? No, oh, I wish I wasn't here anymore. And then when, they, when you really are there, when the doors are really closed, now you want to cry. What are you speaking? Mind your language. Remember there was a sitcom, Mind Your Language? Huh? No. Hallelujah. What that movie, that deaf guy, the blind guy, see no evil, hear no evil. Huh? Speak no evil, see no evil. That's how I'm sharing with you. Speak no evil, see no evil. Because what you speak, you're going to see. You see? Everybody's speaking so bad about South Africa, so bad, so bad. Hey, how about you? The authority to change it is in your mouth. Change your language. Oh, the government is corrupt. So what? Pray for them. Why don't you release blessing? I mean, praise God, we've got some form of law and order. There are countries where there's no laws. Hmm? Come on. Oh, the police are corrupt, the police are... The, so, listen, when you go to fruit and veg, and you go buy the sack of potatoes, I don't know, but I've always found them, as you use them, once you get to the bottom, when you get to the bottom, come on, maybe I'm speaking for myself, and I'm the only one that experiences this. You get all the bad ones right at the bottom of the bottom of the bed. Huh? Exactly. So because of the bad one doesn't mean that the whole entire police force is corrupt. 
you've got some good ones. So learn from the potato bag. The bad potatoes, that's what you say now. When you buy potatoes, I'm giving you free cup. Come to the house of God, I'll give you for free. I'm not even charging you for Take the bag of potatoes, turn it upside down, and you'll see at the bottom, you know the bottom of the bag, you can see whether the potatoes are good or not. At the bottom. At the top. They put all the nice wash on the bottom. All the nice ones on the top. Oh, such lovely, but then you get home. My goodness, you should have looked before you paid for it. Now I'm trying to save you money. See, come to church, we teach you. Huh? Now, what am I trying to say? Learn from the bag of potatoes. All the rotten ones are at the bottom. The corrupt, those corrupt officials are at the bottom. Ah, but pastor, you don't know what position they hold. Listen. Exaltation comes from the Lord. Promotion comes from the Lord. It, it, it won't be long now. It won't be long. It won't be long before you get to the bottom. I mean, if God could take a king from his throne and transform him into a donkey to eat grass. Huh? It's in your Bible. God took a king from his throne, made him, turn him into a donkey to eat grass, to teach him a lesson. Do you think God, God, God can't step in? God can't come in and balance the scales? God can. God can, you're a child of God. You gotta pray, hallelujah. Thank God for the gospel, praise God for the gospel. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God for the gospel. Yes. The gospel must be preached. Yes. Jesus came to give us a wonderful gospel. Yeah. Not gossip. Okay. Now your eyes go like that now. Okay. He didn't come to give us gossip. He came to give us gospel. Yes. I made up my mind. Someone will come and tell you about someone and say, listen, let's just pray about this. And you pray for whoever this person is bad about and say, I pray for the deliverer of this message. Not that you deliver them, that this message spread no further. Oh, you're quiet. You're quiet. You know what? You, as you do that, you're spreading the gospel. You're spreading the gospel. Because I'm praying for that person, that this person. I pray for the salvation of that person. I pray for the salvation of the person standing in front of me. Everybody needs salvation. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you are loosed. Come and stand up like this and just say, I'm loosed. I'm free. Yes. I'm free. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Huh? You need a spouse? Spouse? Thou art loosed! Yes. Oh Jesus, come on somebody. If you do, who would come on? Just let me know. Oh yes, I am free, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. I am free, therefore everything I desire is free to come to me. How did you get there? Hallelujah. There's nothing that can keep you back. There's nothing that can stop you. Hallelujah. Nothing can move you. The child of the Most High God. Where you go, He goes. Where you are, He is. Come on, talk to me. He doesn't leave you, nor does He forsake you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe, you know, let me just throw this one in for free. Maybe it's, um, you know, a dream you had. You, you are driving a, a lovely Bentley and all of a sudden you, you're driving a bicycle. Don't get up in the middle, in, in the morning and you start saying, oh, the dream I had and the dream starts troubling you. And you say, oh, no, listen, 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 listen. Before you sleep, you say, you lock the doors to your dream world. You lock the doors. Satan, you're not welcoming my dreams. I have godly dreams. You see, when you have, you must make confession of these things. I have godly dreams. Through my dreams, God speaks to me, just as He did to Joseph. 
No, don't get up in the mid, in the morning and then you want to wonder, oh, what's the meaning of this tree? I was driving a Bentley and then I took a corner and then I'm driving a bicycle. <laughs> you get up, you say in the name of Jesus, that Bentley, you come. That bicycle, Satan, you can ride, on, ride to hell with it. <laughs> come on! Yeah. You find him, folk. Oh, you know, uh, you know, what is it? Hey, listen, give the devil the bicycle to go. Tell him, get to hell on that bicycle. But really, that's mine. That's mine. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You are freed. You are freed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm a child of the living God. A child of the Most High God. Yeah. My hands are anointed. Understand? You have an anointing. Read the book of Acts 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. That same power has been given to you. That same anointing is upon you. That same anointing is within you. You have an anointing from the Holy One. All you need to do is to abide in the anointing. How to abide in the anointing? By abiding in the anointed word. It's called the word of God. When you abide in the word, you will bear fruit. Or you have to be somebody. As long as you abide in the anointing, the anointing will fight on your behalf. The anointing will do what you cannot do. That is what the anointing is. The anointing is the presence of God to do supernatural exploits. Those things that are not common unto men. That is what you have to see from God. It's time for you to do the supernatural, the uncommon. Uncommon. That's what you were called to do. Not the common. Uncommon. Business ideas. Strategies, solutions. Come on, let's just pray. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's just pray. Thank you, Jesus. 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 And that, O oh Lord God, that very anointing is upon your church, upon your people. You've anointed the Lord to do great things. I pray, O oh Lord God, over the church. I pray over your people. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, that they will walk, O oh Lord God, in the liberty that Christ has given unto them. That they'll walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. That they'll walk in the fullness of the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your son. I thank you, Lord, for the power of the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who will believe. Father, I thank you this morning that you have freed us, Lord. You have liberated us, O oh God. You freed us, O oh Lord God, from death into life. You freed us, O oh Lord God, from sickness into divine health, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, I thank you that strength comes to the people of God now. Healing comes now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you now for supernatural favor, supernatural grace in the name of Jesus. We give you thanks and praise and glory and honor, O oh God, in Jesus' wonderful name, O oh Lord. I pray over your people, O oh God, that they will, O oh Lord God, experience the goodness of God. Let the wisdom of God operate in their lives. Father, in their dreams, speak to them, O oh God. Give them visions. Give them strategies and ideas, O oh God. Make known unto them the plans of God. Let the voice of the Holy Spirit speak to them and guide them and lead them along in the path of life. I thank you, my God, that you never leave nor do you forsake your people. Thank you for your goodness, O oh God. Thank you for Jesus Christ, your Son. He's the 
Son of God who has made us Son. And Father, as we walk the face of this earth, we will change the world around us by, by speaking your word, by saying what you say. For by your word will the world is free. And by your word will the world be changed. Choose to speak and say the word of God for boldness. We have a message of God the world needs to hear. We thank you, Lord of God. Thank you that you've given us this wonderful word. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Father, we believe the word of God. According to your word, O oh Lord, we have received the same spirit of faith according as what is written. I believe and therefore I speak. We too, O oh Lord, believe and therefore speak. Speak the oracles of God. Into our families, into our homes, into our workplaces, our businesses, into our community, oh God, into our towns and villages, our cities, our provinces, our country, our continent, and our world. Oh Lord, oh God, we thank you now. We give you thanks and we give you praise, we glory, honor, and worship. Thank you so much. Now, Lord God, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the love of God and sweet fellowship of the Holy Ghost, rest and abide with your people, both now and forevermore. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' wonderful name. Thank you, O oh God. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Gladness of heart. In Jesus' wonderful name, the Lord bless you, keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. Grant you special faith, great success. In Jesus' wonderful name. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Amen.